A model steam engine test plant, this is part 19. Fitting the new tank to the central column, piping the number 4 injector the right way round this time, steaming the boiler to make sure that the injector works. I made this quarter BSF bolt to hold the top tank to the column. Because where possible I do not like to use Allen cap head bolts. With the top tank now in place, I threaded the piece of silicone rubber tubing from the overflow into the gap. And then using a socket on the screwdriver attachment, with some help from a barco spanner, I tightened the bolt to hold the top tank firmly in place. Now that the injector is the correct way round, piping it was considerably easier than my last attempt. Please watch the video called A Bad Day in My Workshop for more details. Here, as usual, using a felt tip pen, I'm marking the position where I need to cut the pipe. I moved a couple of episodes away from this series into their own in the workshop area. I made a larger tank in the video called A Good Day in My Workshop. What I need to do next is silver solder this fitting onto the end of the pipe. This is a flat ended fitting, not a coned union. These are used for injectors, so you can quickly remove the pipe without disturbing anything. Thanks to the magic of video editing, I've silver soldered and cleaned up the pipe, and here I'm fitting it in place. And if you want to know more about silver soldering, just watch How to Silver Solder for Beginners. Once upon a time, this Jubilee Fittings injector was fitted to my 7.25 inch gauge Titch locomotive, and it was always problematic. Before I sold the Titch locomotive, I changed the injectors for two new ones. So what I'm doing here is dicing with death by using one that was problematic on the Titch installation. Now it's time to pipe the other injector to the check valve on the small turret sticking out of the boiler. When I'm bending piping, I bend it gently by hand first so I know where I need to bend it. Then I use a pipe bender to get the curve a little bit more uniform. To save time in this video, once again, I haven't shown the silver soldering or cleaning up operation. Here, I'm tightening the union nut onto the check valve. And then tightening the other end of this piece of pipe to the injector. And that is the piping complete and ready to go. For some reason, in this clip, the top pipe looks like it's bent, but it isn't really. This copper pipe is very soft due to the silver soldering process. It's fully annealed so I can easily bend it in any direction by hand. The time has come to fill the tank with water and test the system. I made this adapter to pipe the water out of the bottom tank and into a suitable receptacle on the floor. Here it is, it's my normal workshop water bottle. Now it's time to light the gas burners and make sure that they both work. I'm using a spark igniter to light the burner. That sounded good, a nice loud explosion, and in no time at all I can clearly see that both of the burners are burning together. In this clip I'm just checking that the steam valves are closed. This boiler with its twin burners burns very cleanly, and in no time at all the boiler is too hot to touch. Not quite at boiling point, but getting there. And as you can clearly see, nothing is showing on the pressure gauge at the moment but in no time at all, the needle starts to move in an upwards direction. I drained quite a lot of the water out of the boiler so that raising steam would be quicker. And with both burners working, it certainly was. In no time at all, this is where we are. The pressure gauge is now approaching 30 pounds per square inch of steam. This is about the minimum for this type of injector, so I think I'll give it a go and see what happens. I open the water valve first, to cool the injector, then I open the steam valve, followed by starting to close the water valve. And look what happens. Suddenly, as if by magic, the water level in the water gauge starts to go up the glass tube. Surprisingly though, this injector is not making the familiar injector noise. I think I may treat this plant to a new injector. If I close the water valve too much, then steam comes out of the overflow and when a live steam injector is making this noise, it is definitely not injecting water into the boiler. And looking at the pressure gauge, it's easy to see why. The pressure is too low. And another minor detail, the water tank is empty. This is a larger water tank than the previous one. 
Here I've filled up the tank and now I'm showing the speed at which the tank empties when the injector's working. And the injector is actually making a live steam injector sound. It's a bit quiet, but then again, it's only a small injector. With this amount of water being pumped into the boiler, in no time at all the pressure drops and the water tank empties quickly. Here I've refilled the tank for a second time. That horrible noise is a safety valve blowing off and the boiler has reached its working pressure of 60 pounds per square inch. But it soon stops blowing off because look how much water the injector has pumped into the boiler. It's almost full to the top and the pressure is rising again. So everything's fine. Here I'm releasing some of the water into the plastic tub where the gas tank is because the gas tank is quite chilled at this stage. Although from a health and safety standpoint, I do not recommend that you do this. The injector water tank, once again, is a bit on the low side. In fact, it's almost empty. And now I've turned off the gas and disconnected the gas canister from the system. Everything is now working as it should. I just need to make a turret to connect the steam pipe to, which will also hold a displacement lubricator. I will do that in the next and final episode of this series. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.